Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Lionel Ferrat and I will uh, talk about an interesting topic which is uh, flying to the ISS, yes, but uh, what does it uh, truly mean? Um, because I, everybody is more or less aware what is the flight to the space station and uh, but really knowing what is behind all the training, what is the operations uh, behind it, it's uh, I think something that everybody should know and uh, everybody is not aware of it. So I'm working for the uh, European Space Agency in Cologne, in, in Germany, and I will just uh, present myself quickly. So uh, this is my uh, working place. Uh, as you can see, this is um, the training hall where we have different uh, space station modules. In the background, you can see ATV, uh, the former, uh, because it's not flying anymore, uh, the former cargo ship designed uh, for in Europe to deliver cargo to the space station. And in the lower left corner, so you can see Columbus module, which is the main um, laboratory for Europe on board the space station. But I am not only working uh, in this place. This is uh, mostly where I work, but I am also teaching a uh, few times in Star City in, in Russia. Now, uh, less and less because the, uh, the cargo ship has, uh, has been stopped. But this is a view of uh, the uh, venerable and renowned uh, Star City in Russia. But I'm also teaching uh, a few times in the Lyndon Johnson uh, Space Center, so in Houston. And as, you, uh, as I will explain a bit later, this is more linked to robotics and also in terms of communication with the space station. So uh, a few words about myself. Uh, uh, you, uh, I can introduce myself like this. So with uh, using my traditional CV and my face, but it's completely uninteresting. I prefer to present myself uh, like this. It's actually uh, the four pictures that you can see is uh, more linked to uh, who am I truly. So first of all, yes, I'm a true passionate about space. Uh, and this is since uh, my youth and I fell into it when I was very small. Uh, the second one is more uh, I love mountains and I like the outdoors and I like climbing big mountains. The third one of my personalities I always enjoyed uh, public transport and complicated ones and uh, because for me public transport is always a, a true uh, mean for people to, to move around in the city in a more ecological friendly way. And I'm also a, a pilot, private pilot, uh, uh, on my free time. All right, so my, my background is uh, practically I'm born in France, uh, near the Alps, in the big city, big city of Lyon. And uh, from there, I study in Metz, in the east of France, where in Supedec. I study there uh, mostly electrical engineering and automation, and then I moved to Darmstadt. Uh, to study space and still continue on the automation part. This was more the, the study part. And then uh, later on, I got my first job in Paris. And in Paris, I was lucky enough to work in the design of the ATV, so the automated transfer vehicle, uh, so which was the cargo ship with the saw in the introduction uh, in Cologne. So I was uh, a happy engineer over there to design the, the big brain, the automation of, uh, of the of this uh, cargo ship. Uh, once the program, the design was over uh, and was discontinued, then I moved to Brussels. And um, from there in Brussels, I work, uh, started to work for a, a small Belgium company, uh, mostly for ESA. So we did some uh, ESA studies uh, over there uh, on various missions, especially the evolution of ATV, but as well as uh, I continued to work also on Mars missions and. Uh, uh, this was did continue. Uh, I did. I never really discontinued the work on ATV uh, there. And then I heard the opportunity that uh, after ATV was designed, uh, we had a need to train the astronauts and the cosmonauts to use it uh, for docking, for cargo operations, and to undock it. And then Cologne uh, uh, in, in Germany called me if I was interested to become an astronaut instructor because I had the background of being an engineer and I also. Uh, was involved in the design of this vehicle, so I could continue teaching it. So that's why I moved afterwards to Cologne. So you see this this big S is practically uh, my parkour uh, 
all around Europe for my studies and my work. So yeah, in Supelec, uh, it's a, uh, a French university. Uh, I study in Metz and also a little bit in Paris. And uh, this is mostly based on electrical engineering and automation. So that's, uh, that's more or less what I did. And uh, if you are looking at a, as a student to what should I do to work to space, I can tell you there are so many ways to get into it. Uh, but one of them for me was this one. And I did a second master afterwards to complement this. So Superdeck, I mostly learned what you see on the screen is logic and automation. So uh, this is a, a stupid example here. What is really truly automation is you practically uh, see a problem and you try to solve it in a logical way. So this is what you learn uh, and it's how you also you design a system. Then I continue, I did a second master uh, in Darmstadt in Germany. Uh, and in Darmstadt, Germany, I continue on the automation and electrical engineering, but I did mostly space uh, engineering over there, aerospace. And uh, here you see a picture of the main square, the Riesenplatz in, in Darmstadt, where I spend sometimes commuting between a few uh, teaching locations. Over there, uh, I study uh, mostly so space engineering, and I did my final thesis at ESOC, one of the ESA center. Uh, responsible for operational spacecraft and I was in a mission analysis analyzing uh, missions on planetary bodies and here as you can see uh, I study mostly uh, landing on Mars trajectories guidance navigation uh, how to improve the trajectories control and uh, computation um, during my thesis so a few words uh, about uh, ESA uh, my main employer and uh, ESA is uh, practically the, uh, the European NASA for who, who doesn't know it uh, and uh, ESA has main program uh, some of the main program is science so uh, here you can see for instance uh, some pictures of what uh, ESA does is uh, the background noise uh, of the uh, uh, for instance it's a, a mission that was designed to look for the background noise of the universe or uh, solar uh, weather or even uh, uh, astronomy, pure astronomy and spectrometry. Uh, this is the, the so, so to say the science aspect of ESA which are automated probe or telescopes. But also something that uh, you might know is uh, ESA has also designed uh, solar uh, probes and uh, some of them uh, landed on the very distant bodies like on Titan on the left hand side as you can see this is a a picture taken by the Huygens probe, uh, which landed in 2003 uh, over there on Titan. And on the, on the right, you see the famous uh, picture of the landing of Philae, and, uh, which was the, uh, the small lander of Rosetta uh, back uh, last year. And uh, one of the main missions also of ESA is to, well, one of the biggest projects actually from ESA is the Earth observation. And here you can see, for instance, even though it's in German, I think you can understand it's the, uh, uh, more or less the composition of the atmosphere, not the composition, but the CO2 repartition uh, all around the atmosphere uh, at a certain point in time uh, in, in, uh, in different years. And you can see how it evolves. So that's also a mission of ESA is to uh, monitor our planet. One main mission of ESA is to be uh, to design the access to space, independent access to space for Europeans. And on the left, you have IN5, which is the main workhorse uh, for the European launches. And on the right, the newest of the family, which is Vega, uh, or almost all solid rocket launcher derived from IN5. Also, ESA is strongly involved in navigation, so. Uh, ESA is with the European Commission are involved in the, in the Galileo uh, satellite navigation system, which is dependent of the, the GPS. And this is the, the picture on the right hand side. And on the left, for instance, this is a, a small satellite uh, for uh, um, Proba, which is more or less a, um, a satellite for observation as well. Uh, the budget of ESA is relatively small comparing to NASA, for instance, but it's, this is a relative comparison. In absolute term, it's uh, 
it's an impressive uh, budget, of course, for every mortal like we are. So it's 5.7 uh, billion for 2017, and we employ something like 2,250 person, plus minus 100, of course, fluctuating. Uh, this is more or less uh, what's happening in, in, in the ESA. And if you compare to NASA, NASA has a budget only for the civilian part. I'm not talking about uh, the military part. It's uh, 19, million, 19 billion, uh, which employs something like uh, 17,000 uh, person. Uh, this main pie chart just describes a little bit what is the overall uh, picture of ESA. Um, as you can see, Earth observation, the green part is the, it's a big one. Uh, then you have launches and navigation. But what we are more interested today uh, in looking in is more the human spaceflight. And human spaceflight is an optional program, so it means we are not entitled to finance it every year or every, uh, at every mandate. It's an optional program. As you can see, uh, we have a budget of, uh, for this year of something like 633 million uh, euro, which is a lot, but on the other hand, it's not that much uh, for all the, the things we need to do. Uh, 